So let's draw a simple conference room here. Suppose we have a DSP, a beam forming microphone, an interface for your computer, a camera and a TV for video conferencing, and a set of speakers. When Dante Controller launches, it will subscribe to a multicast stream at 224.0.0.251, port 5353. Now this discovery message is going to act like a party line phone. We'll be able to hear everybody that's talking back to us. And in fact, if multiple devices are subscribed, multiple devices will hear all of those announcements. That's why we can have multiple copies of Dante Controller on the network and they'll all get the same information. Now, Dante Controller isn't the only thing receiving and using this information. Let me gray out our communication line so we can see what I'm adding. We can see every Dante device will subscribe to this stream as well. That is how Dante devices learn about other Dante devices on the network. Once they see a new device, they might trigger a new clock collection process, or they might look down their list of subscriptions and see if there's a stream they need to get going. So, Discovery is a multicast stream, but once we want to start sending commands to a device, we'll probably start using unicast. Let's suppose someone wants to make a subscription. They click in the routing grid, and Dante Controller sends a command to the device that will receive the stream. That device responds with a multicast update that it is working on establishing the stream. When each instance of Dante Controller sees that, it will show us the hourglass in the routing screens. Now again, because the Dante devices were receiving the discovery messages before, it knows where to find the source of the signal, and it will request the stream. In this case, it knows to get the signal from this beam-forming microphone. That device will then start sending the Dante stream. And once that's running, the DSP will send one more update that the stream is all good. When Dante controller sees that, it will replace the hourglass with a green check mark in the screen. Okay, so that's a detailed view of how this works through discovery, creating a subscription, and so on. Knowing that, we can use this information when we have to troubleshoot something. So one of the first things to recognize is we are strategically using a combination of unicast and multicast for different types of traffic. We'll choose those because they achieve different results, and of course they achieve different results because they follow different rules. Let's take a look at how they differ. In unicast, everything we learned about subnetting applies. A transmitter will look at an IP address and decide whether to send the packet to the device directly or to send it to the router. In multicast, the transmitter doesn't know who the receiver is. It just blindly sends the data to the network, stamping it with a subscription address. From there, it's up to the network switches to move the packets to their destinations. In a layer two space, all of this will really move by a MAC address. In unicast, the MAC address is listed right on the packet. With multicast, if multicast management, like IGMP snooping, is engaged, then it will look for subscription requests. But of course, if there is no multicast management, then the multicast just repeats to every port, right? Finally, once the packet arrives at the receiver, the device will see which internal service registered for this packet. Receivers expecting unicast will register for an IP port. Multicast subscriptions will be relevant for the IP address and the IP port. So the differences certainly abound, but let's see how this would impact discovery. What happens if you mess up your IP address? Let's suppose that you pre-programmed this DSP. Back at the office, you had a different subnet than what the customer is using. And of course, back at the office, you might have had to use a static IP. So now you bring this into the customer's network and, ah, I forgot to release that static IP. Okay, here's what happens. Dante Controller will subscribe to the multicast stream. And since multicast isn't dependent on subnet rules, we will receive the discovery message from that transmitter. So far, so good. But now we want to be able to send a command to that DSP, perhaps to get more detailed status information or to create a subscription. Well, that command is going to be sent by unicast. Now we're back to following the rules of subnets. When the laptop sees the IP address of that DSP, it will determine that it's not in the same subnet, and it will send that to the router. The router will begin looking for that address on other VLANs. It'll be looking in the wrong place, and it won't complete the connection. To alert you to that issue, 
Dante Controller can show the device in red. And as I've said before, anytime Dante Controller shows you a picture, a color, a graphic, it has a purpose. If you double click on the device in red, Dante Controller may be able to give us more information about this device. In this case, we can see it's listed in a different subnet. OK, well, that's helpful information. I could take my laptop, set it to a static IP in the same subnet with this DSP, and then make the changes to get everything back where it should be. I don't have to worry about uh, factory resetting everything and losing all my work, right? OK, let's try another scenario. What if everything is showing up in red? Did you put every device in the wrong subnet? Well, I suppose that's possible. However, it's also possible that your laptop is the one device that's in the wrong subnet. Since laptops move around a lot, and we often need to be at specific addresses when we're commissioning things, we may have forgotten to move back to auto IP addressing. Well, here's another possibility. If you're on a system with redundant networks, you might have your laptop on the wrong network. If Dante Controller is expecting to be on the Dante primary network, but you've connected it to the secondary, it will show the devices in red. I think these issues are all pretty straightforward. They're just simple mistakes that we make during commissioning and can be easily fixed. Finally, what happens if Dante Controller can't show you anything? Well, this is a conundrum. And what I would probably start with is figuring out whether this is a problem on the laptop or a problem on the network. I'll start with the obvious stuff. Make sure that Dante Controller is looking at the right network port. Maybe it's looking at Wi-Fi when you think it's looking at the wired port. Now, if I've never seen this copy of Dante Controller work before, maybe this is a new computer to me, then what I might do is just pull out a known working computer, connect it to the network, and see what happens. If that computer works fine, then we know it's something in this computer. It could be something as simple as security software blocking access to certain ports, um, or, of course, maybe a magic reboot or reinstalling Dante Controller just to make sure that the installation went properly. If all that checks out and I'm on a larger network with a lot of configuration, another simple step is to plug directly into a Dante device. If the device has redundant ports and the secondary is free, make sure the device is set into switched mode and plug directly into the secondary port. By doing this, we'll get the automatic IP configuration from the network, but we'll be able to get traffic directly from the Dante device. We won't have to worry about any traffic management blocking anything from the network switch. If the device doesn't have redundant ports or it requires PoE, don't despair. You can get the same effect with a small unmanaged switch. This would do the same trick, which is why I always carry one in my troubleshooting kit. So if a direct connection works, but a connection across the larger network doesn't, at least you know the Dante device and your laptop are working properly. The problem then must be on the larger network. And mind you, since we work on unconfigured networks, this is probably something you did or an IT manager did in configuration. This was a clip from the Dante certification program. To learn more, go to audinate.com slash certify.